Hi all, my name is Shelby Hartman. I'm Double Blind's co-founder and editor-in-chief, and today we're gonna talk about building a tolerance to mushrooms. Can you build a tolerance to mushrooms? How long does it take to build a tolerance for mushrooms? And if you build a tolerance, should you take a tolerance break? Now stay tuned for all of that, but before we get into it, I wanna tell you a little bit about Double Blind in case you don't know about our work already. Double Blind is a media company and education platform covering all things pertaining to the psychedelic movement. So we have hundreds and hundreds of articles on everything you could ever possibly need to know from shroom dosage, to microdosing to the difference between LSD and mushrooms, to our favorite ayahuasca retreats and what it means to be a responsible psychedelic user. We also have courses with the world world's leading psychedelic experts on how to grow mushrooms, how to microdose, how to trip sit, and all the proceeds from those courses go directly back into our journalism and videos like this to support people like you. So if you're inspired by our work and you want to help us out and or you want to just learn more about psychedelics, check us out at doubleblindmag.com. Now let's talk about tolerance to shrooms. Whether you're curious about trying shrooms for the first time or you're an experienced psychonaut, you may be wondering about how building a tolerance to shrooms will affect your trip. And here's something funny to know about this famous fungus. If you trip on Saturday, you'll be disappointed if you try again on Sunday. Your brain just won't have it, and here's why. Psilocybin tolerance is about how strongly you respond to the effects of shrooms. At the risk of stating the obvious, the term tolerance in health and medicine refers to the diminished response your body has to a substance like psilocybin when you consume it repeatedly. Over time, the human body can become desensitized to the experiential effects of certain drugs if you take them over and over again. When you build up a tolerance to a substance, you need more and more of it to experience the same effects as you did the first time you partook. You may be most familiar with alcohol or opioid tolerance, as drinkers and people who use opioids need to increase their dosage as time goes on to achieve the same level of intoxication. The same can be said for cannabis. Psilocybin tolerance is different. Unlike substances like alcohol and opioids, psilocybin is thought to have a low potential for abuse and is unlikely to cause compulsive use. If you've ever tripped on mushrooms before, you probably know why. It's not an experience most people want to be having every single day, unless you're taking psilocybin in really small doses, which is microdosing and a whole other protocol from taking large doses or macrodosing. The Drug Policy Alliance writes in their fact sheet on psilocybin mushrooms, quote, one reason is that the intense experience, which can be physically and mentally challenging, may cause people using psilocybin to limit their frequency of use. It goes on to say, another reason is that the human body quickly builds tolerance to psilocybin such that people require much higher doses after only a few days of repeated use, making it extremely difficult to have any effect after more than four days. The subject of psilocybin tolerance is not well studied. There's still so much we need to learn about psilocin's effect on the brain. Psilocin, as a reminder, is the psilocybin metabolite that produces psychedelic effects. So psilocybin is often referred to as the primary psychoactive component in psychedelic mushrooms, but psilocybin is actually converted into psilocin in the human body. Still, as Drug Policy Alliance suggests, building a long-term tolerance to shrooms is unlikely given the fungi's powerful experiential effects. Instead, shroom tolerance is more of a question of how long it's been since your last trip, according to psilocybin experts. Michelle Janikian, a contributor to Double Blind and also the author of Your Psilocybin Mushroom Companion writes, quote, if you finish a mushroom trip and you try to take mushrooms again, it just won't work. You can develop a short-term tolerance. So how does tolerance to shrooms work? If you were hoping to spend several consecutive days exploring psilocybin, you might not have the kind of success you're looking for, even if you increase your dose each time. The short-term shroom tolerance that develops when you try to repeat your trip too soon after your last trip is known as tachphylaxis. 
Studies into the question of tolerance and psilocybin are limited, but studies of LSD can be informative when it comes to psilocybin. It's well understood in the scientific literature that shrooms and LSD affect the same receptors in your brain, the 5-HT2A receptors. These receptors are also known as, quote, serotonin receptors because they respond to the neurotransmitter serotonin. Studies of LSD show that these receptors only respond to the drug up to a certain point at which they rapidly deregulate or stop reacting in the same way. In other words, if your brain is exposed to an initial dose of psilocin, the chemical in psilocybin mushrooms that crosses the blood-brain barrier, taxalaxis kicks in and your brain won't undertake any additional response to the chemical compound for a little while. Although researchers are not certain about the mechanisms of action behind the phenomenon. Tolerance also occurs if you try to trip on LSD right after a mushroom trip. From early studies of psychedelics, we know that cross-tolerance happens between LSD, psilocybin, and mescaline, all drugs that interact with the serotonin receptors. For that reason, Michelle Janikian says that at retreats she has attended where participants take mushrooms, it's normal for there to be at least a 24-hour break between trips, sometimes longer. Outside of retreats, Janikian says she tends to take breaks of several months between trips, these pauses may allow your receptors to accept psilocin again. It also allows you to recalibrate after an experience that can be emotionally, intellectually, or spiritually intense for a lot of people. We talk about this a lot on the Double Blind platform. We have a course on how to take psychedelics and how to integrate them into your lives. But generally speaking, make sure that you have taken the proper time to integrate the lessons, revelations, shifts, whatever happened for you during your last psychedelic experience before you dive in again. Even if you haven't built up a tolerance, you just wanna make sure that you're really allowing yourself to fully benefit from whatever came up for you during that initial trip before just going back in and opening a bunch more stuff within yourself up. Now let's talk about how long psilocybin stays in your system. The effects of shrooms typically last between four and six hours, depending on the size and potency of the dose you've taken. The effects of magic mushrooms often come on around 30 to 40 minutes after ingestion. We have a whole article on how long it takes shrooms to kick in. This is not always the case. If you do something called lemon tech, they'll hit faster. If you haven't eaten that day, they'll hit faster. But generally speaking, 30 to 40 minutes after ingestion is when you will start to feel them, with peak effects occurring two to three hours later. After the peak of the psychedelic experience, the trip slowly winds to an end. Psilocybin then gets filtered out of your body over about 24 hours. The body metabolizes and excretes psilocybin relatively quickly, thank you kidneys, compared to the substance in other drugs like cannabis. In contrast, about two thirds of ingested psilocybin leaves your body within the first three hours after consumption. Shrooms don't stay in your system for that long. Still, it's normal to feel a little unusual for a few hours or even days after your trip, something that we sometimes refer to as the sparkle period or afterglow effect. Not everybody is so lucky to experience sort of a new lease on life in the days following or even weeks following a psychedelic experience, but it is very common. So even if psilocybin has been fully metabolized and excreted from your system and your tolerance for shrooms is back to normal in your brain, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be ready for your next trip. Janikian writes, because mushrooms are so intense, you're still kind of in this afterglow space in the days after the trip. And I just don't think you'd go as deep if you went in the next day. The biggest questions that we get from students in our microdosing class is, can I build a long-term tolerance to shrooms? And the answer is it may be possible for people who microdose, which is taking a small dose, usually around 1 10th to 1 20th of a recreational dose a few times a week, to develop a slight tolerance to psilocybin, resulting in the need to increase the dosage slightly over time. If you're interested in microdosing, we encourage you to sign up for our microdosing class where we get into all of this, including providing live support 24 hours, I don't wanna say 24 hours a day, but every day with our coach, Adam Bramlage. But research into this topic is limited, and that's just where we're at, and it's important to be aware of that. In one small study in Norway of men who microdosed psychedelics, some reported tolerance to the effects of shrooms, while others didn't. 
without a wealth of reliable studies on the question of tolerance and many other topics in the field of psychedelics, including microdosing, it can be hard to say anything conclusive about microdosing psilocybin and tolerance, but it may be worth considering what anecdotal evidence has to say. At Double Blind, we look at you know what what is the rigorous research that's out there, and we also look at what quote citizen scientists have to say because you know there's thousands and thousands of people who are microdosing, and they're writing about their experiences online and telling us about their experiences at Double Blind. Some researchers have turned to online forums, blogs, and other sources of user-generated data for clues. And in a review of microdosing testimonials on YouTube, researchers noted that some users recommended taking breaks from microdosing to avoid tolerance buildup. A tolerance break is what it sounds like when you stop taking a substance to reset your tolerance level. Tolerance breaks may be particularly important for people who microdose mushrooms, given that there is currently very little information about the long-term health effects of microdosing. Luckily, psilocybin mushrooms are not known to cause physical dependence, so taking a break shouldn't make you feel sick or require any cutting back regimen. In one interview with James Fadiman, who's widely considered kind of the modern pioneer father of microdosing, who we featured on the Double Blind platform, who supported our students in our microdosing class, he explained that after a month of microdosing, a lot of people just simply stop or they decide to microdose only now and then, something that the coach of our microdosing class, Adam Bramlage, refers to as the intuitive protocol. In Fadiman's words, quote, what began to happen is by 30 days, their system had reorganized enough, a statement he made in a 2020 video interview with the Microdosing Institute. Additionally, taking a break could save you money if upping your dose takes a toll on your budget. It may also be what you're just inclined to do anyway. Generally speaking, when we're talking about engaging with psychedelics, we're talking about big doses, macrodosing, or small doses, microdosing. And as in sort of an overview of what we've touched on in this video, with macrodosing, you're probably just gonna naturally be taking a tolerance break because Contact us if this is you, but I can't imagine that any of you out there are wanting to or have tried to take psychedelics every single day in perpetuity at large doses. With microdosing, it's a whole other beast, and it's something that we are gathering more information about every single day through anecdotal reports and observational studies that are asking people what their experiences are. And at this point, really, if you wanna take a tolerance break because you feel that your tolerance is increasing through microdosing mushrooms, that's something that you're just gonna have to feel into on your own unless you wanna engage in a class or engage a coach that can help you figure out what works best. For more information on microdosing, on mushrooms, on all things pertaining to the psychedelic movement, you can check us out at doubleblindmag.com. <laughs>